doing? It's your boy Hooligan Hex. Hey, what's doing? It's your boy Hooligan Hex. I categorize my stuff like in bringing that Oz culture, you know what I mean? Uh. Hooligan Hess is one of the nation's most established artists. He's playing a big part in helping put Australian rap on the map. This is his story so far. Hess grew up in Doonside, Western Sydney. This is something he rapped very proudly in his music. From the 6 7, I grew up around the West, I've been there my whole life. My background is Samoan Chinese. So I grew up um, in Doonside, 2767. Now everyone around, we just rep 67. 67, like there's a lot of um, multiculturalism. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> big word, bro. <laughs> Spell check, no. How you can tell someone from the West is just their attitude, like how they carry themselves. Like they walk like they got a chip on their shoulder. Their outfits, like if you see someone in a tracksuit or Air Maxes, then you're like, yeah, boom, he's from the wild, wild west. As a teenager, he formed a crew. They called himself Hooligans. It also featured fellow rapper Hooligan Skinny. As a teenager, he always dabbled in music. Although he could never take it serious, as he always had one foot in the street and would often find himself in some serious trouble. Although back then, he would rap in more of an American accent over some more traditional top boom bap beats. As a teenager, he would often attend parties at the local car park. He would then rap over whatever beats were coming out of the stereos at the time. His brother, without him knowing, uploaded a video of him freestyling to Facebook. It got a couple of views, which made Hess realise that he could take music seriously. But he's, if everyone wants to know, because everyone asks me, like, oh, how did you start music, or one, two, three, this and that, how did you do what you are doing? Yeah. And, like, this is the funny thing, like, he was doing his clothing <coughs> label, and we, like, shot his clothing label, one, two, three. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what, let me bust the freestyle, because we had his camera and that. Don't ask how we got the camera, but we got to be, we had a <laughs> we camera. Thought, we, had a then camera. we had a camera and we took mm -hmm. it for a test. And then I dropped the freestyle, yeah. And then we recorded it and we watched it one, two, three. And then eight months later, mm -hmm. I remember just waking up. It was like 7 p.m. I woken up and then um, I seen he uploaded the video. And then, like, we, it got good feedback. Like, back then, it had like eight, nine K views or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, fuck. That back then was big for us. And we're mm. like, bro, that's fucking hectic. And since then, I ran it. Although his music was starting to gain a bit of a buzz, he ended up catching a case. He got sentenced to nine months. Although he was expecting three to four years, he counted this as a blessing. He then got released. But he only lasted another four months on the street before getting arrested again and locked up for another six months. He knew now that his life had to change and he didn't want to continue down this path. I said so those two, those two, two occasions. Yeah. Um, I just learned, to be honest, I went down, I, I was going down, um, a bad path, obviously yeah. when I was younger. Yeah, what, what I learned is like, there's no life in there, you know what I mean? Because I went, I went in, I was 19, I just turned 19, so I was 18 fresh, just turned 19, and I'd done nine months, and then I got out, and I only lasted like, I think it was like four months out, and then I went in for another six months. I just, yeah, my experience is I learned there's, there's more to life, I guess. You don't, yeah, there's more to life than um than that stuff. Like, you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why I, the second time I come out, I try to, um, I told myself, like, um I had to think, like, I go, like, I have to give this music thing, like, a good shot because this is, like, it's like my ticket, you know what I mean? Yeah. From all this, yeah, so I'm like, so then when I first come out, that's when I actually started uploading my stuff when I'm, um, Spotify and stuff. He then decided that he didn't want to go down that path and spend his life behind bars and he realised that music was his ticket out. While he was locked up, he also dropped a freestyle from his jail cell. This video went viral at the time. Never forgive, never forget, twist the thoughts run through my head, they used their Disney show. He eventually decided to stay out of the streets and stop messing around and focus solely on music. It was his next track that really started to get people listening. He dropped his track titled The Party, which got over 100,000 views in just two weeks, mixing EDM with hip hop. Bad girls wanna party, yeah! Bad girls wanna party, yeah! Bad girls wanna party, yeah! Tell her come through, tell her wait just more bows to the That track now has over 4 million streams just on YouTube. He had everyone in Sydney bumping that track at the time. After seeing all the success the party had, he decided to go down the same path and drop another EDM banger. 
This time, teaming up with producer Open Till Late. Then, on May the 21st, 2019, he dropped his biggest track yet, titled No Effect. This song is now certified platinum and has 24 million views just on Spotify. Hefs gives a lot of credit to his producer Open Till Late for making this song as big as it is. We wanted to turn something like that grimy stuff and then like also keep that party thing going, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was with my boy Open Till Late, I done that grimy stuff, he goes, since you done the party, like, you, we can stick to this party thing. And then he done it himself and like worked up like the drop and that and then he played it. It was a risk, but we took the risk and look, it took off, you know? Hefs kept all the momentum going. Later on that year, dropping an off-guard freestyle and a track called If You Know You Know, which now has over 10 million views just on YouTube. It was also our first introduction to rapper Hooligan Skinny. Hefs kept the ball rolling. On top of all this success, he ended up doing his first headline show touring the east coast of Australia. He was also getting bills on many festivals in Sydney. Although Hess was having a lot of success with his music, police were still applying a lot of pressure to his name, trying to shut down his shows and randomly searching every time they could. This made Hess go even harder. Later on that year, dropping his track, Tell Him I'm Doing Eats Wah, which is now certified gold. 2019 proved to be a massive year, not only for Hooligan Hess, but for the whole Australian hip hop scene, with many acts bursting onto the scene. He also managed to jump on a remix of one of H's songs with Nerve. 2020 was no slowing down for Hess, getting booked on all sorts of festivals, including Splendor in the Grass. 2020 also proved how good Hess' work rate was. Earlier that year, dropping a track called Fame and Paper Route, which now have about 10 million views between them, just on YouTube. My name for Claire, I guarantee you'll see clouds. Them days we stuck in the drought, now we never go we found. Another milestone come later that year, jumping on UK rapper Simba's remix to Rover, which now has nearly 7 million views on YouTube. Hefs again proved how good his work rate was in 2020, dropping his debut EP, which peaked at number 9 on the album ARIA charts. Personally, I think it's a great EP. It also featured guests such as Billy Marie, Blue Boy, UK rapper Dimsy, and Hooligan Skinny. Later that year, he dropped his biggest track yet, titled Send It. It peaked at number 39 on the ARIA charts and even earned him an APRA award for most performed song. It also got played in clubs and on radio stations all across Australia and is now Hooligan Hess' biggest hit. 2021 he again showed no signs of slowing down, touring as much as possible and also dropping a few tracks with collaborations such as Day One and even Havana Brown. As for now in 2022, we've only heard the one track from Hess titled Make Money Not Friends. But besides from dropping music, I'm sure Hess has locked himself away in the studio working hard and hopefully he blesses us with another EP or even a debut album. Hess has established himself as one of the most talented artists in Australia right now. One thing I really admire about Hooligan Hess is he's not afraid to try new sounds and take risks. He also has one of the biggest fan bases in the country and it feels like it's only just the beginning. This has been the story so far by Desired Oz Rap. Yo, it's your boy Frog. Thanks everyone for watching. I'm doing something a little different this video. I'm going to be giving $50 away to one lucky winner. All you have to do is leave a comment under the video and I will pick a random winner and you can DM me on Instagram and I'll give you $50. Also, if you would like to sponsor these videos, please DM me on Instagram and you can get an ad in every video I put up.